Hello again, my friends, to the third and final installment of my Needle Felted Sea Creature Kit tutorials. Hooray! Oh my, I'm already off to an excellent start with me being completely disorganized and not functional. <laughs> Uh, Alright, so we'll be making this little guy a uh, suggestion before we begin. I'm not going to get into the nitty nitty gritty of felting in this video because this is a more advanced kit. So uh, if you are very new to felting and need more introductory beginner friendly videos, then uh, these ones, the blobfish... And the Adorabilis Octopus are more uh, beginner-friendly, as it says in the title. Um, so, this one I would call my level 2. This one is level 1, and then here we are at level 3. It's not super complicated, but if you have never felt it before, I wouldn't start with the Nudibranch, which... Um, He's definitely the cutest, so it's hard not to. You can always try, um, but I would suggest starting with the other two videos. If you want to purchase a companion kit, it's on my website, Kiki Crafts, K E K I I Crafts.com. Um, and this one will be available June 29th, as well as the Blobfish. The Octopus is already available in purple and blue. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna start by opening the bag. Boom. Alright, it's a crinkle, 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 crinkle. Um... One of these days I'll get good at editing and have time to edit, but I really just want to get these out in the world and so bear with me. Um, in your kit, you if you purchase one, you should have, this is uh, 0.7 ounces of thistle roving. It's super pretty. Uh, that's from Bartlett Yarns of Maine. Same for this. This is a golden rod or something. And then this is blue. Light blue. I can't remember the name of it. They're all from the same company. Which is the oldest running business in the United States. They were, it was also in Graveyard Shift. The Stephen King movie. Super cool. Bartlett Yarns. And they're really nice. And uh, I'm really glad I found them. Anyway, you should have some black as well. You really don't need this much black, but uh, if you want to make a bowler hat for him too, there's enough there. <laughs> you will have a, an all wood felting service if this is your, did I say wood? No, I think I said wool. Wool felting service that I made, that I made myself. It's full of um, wool <laughs> from projects that I have made before. So if you've done kits with me, then you, uh, if you've done, yeah, if you, oh my gosh. Girl, it's been hard. It's been rough. It's been a long week. And I'm trying. But uh, I'm good at felting and I'm good at teaching it. So, <laughs> describing the supplies uh, is not does not reflect on how this tutorial is going to go. So, anyway, this thing is in there. And uh, you're going to want to take your craft felt square. You'll get a nice scruff craft felt square. And you want to lay it over top like that um, to give yourself more firmness. Because this will felt down. And also, this will pull up in your project, which we don't want. And then also parts of your wool colors will go into the felting pad. So you can kind of see this one has, is well loved. This is a wool buddy. I like this one. Um, it grew on me. But I also use a stab it wabbit from Serafina Fiber Art. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. Let's get started. Oh, you should also have, most importantly, a seven millimeter eyes, two toothpicks for wrapping the small bits, and then three felting needles. These are 38 
triangle needles. And I'm not going to get into why felting works. You can watch my other videos for that. Uh, and yeah, so if you don't understand why it works, you probably should before you do this. So go check out my other videos. They're just as good as this one. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm going to put him to the side. This is an Apple Legma new to brink. So they're purple. Um, I don't know what apple legma it means, but you could do this tutorial with any colors that you have uh, in similar amounts and it would come out great and look super cute. So yeah, cause a lot of them have this same structure. All right, so first things first, we need to make something we can, you know, work on so oh you know what i think i'll put i think i'll put popsicle sticks in these kits too just because they're helpful and i have a bunch of them so i'm gonna grab one right now and popsicle You also have a popsicle stick. I just decided just now. All right, popsicle stick. So this is, uh, you can use anything, but I'll give you one of these. And I'm gonna unroll my roving. This roving can be thick in spots. So you're definitely gonna wanna divide it up. Um, I would, a, a ruler can be helpful, but you can just eyeball. Uh, eight inches or so and pull it apart then since it's super thick I'm gonna divide it in half so I have two pieces and you divide it in half from the middle and split it vertically and now I'm gonna make his um, body shape so it's like a little bean and basically what we're gonna do is wrap the stick tightly going all the way down to the top and then back I can't remember if I did the head of this guy separately I actually don't think that I did so that's always an option if you are having trouble getting him, him to curve up then you can do the head separately and attach it but I think I did it all in one piece I don't even know if I used a ton of depressor I had COVID when I made this guy so my memory is not memorying, memory mobile. All right, so here's the other one. I'm going to travel up and then travel back down and then taper off. You can felt if you need to, but this wool is really nice for that. You um, also, for not felting, this wool is for felting, but not felting. It not felt really well. <laughs> it just holds the shape is what I mean. Babbling on. Anyway, so same deal. I'm going to grab another piece. Split it down the center. Still a little thick, so I might draft it out a little bit so you don't get um, chunky chunks. And then starting from the back, traveling back up to the top. Woo! And then back down. Boy, is it hot without the air condish. Oh, friendly PSA for everybody who works with fiber. It is moth season. So make sure that if you see one and you have fiber around, that you act fast. All right, because they are ever increasing. Anyway, here's my other piece. Throwing down the body and then back. I find that the more people who watch me are gonna be annoyed by me. Well, it's too bad. All right, I have this um, delicious grape popsicle going. And if you have any question about the firmness of your piece, how firm it should be, if you squeeze this little medallion, you'll probably want to take your needles out. But if you squeeze the little felt medallion, this is a good thickness 
this way, not this way, because I didn't felt the side so much. I just compacted the middle, and it's a good, you can really tell the difference. You want it springy. This guy's pretty firm. Firm but springy. And just being careful when you take your felting needle that you're not hitting the popsicle stick. You're stopping. You're just glancing it. Again, the barbs are only on the tip of the needle, so you don't need to hammer it in. All right. This felted as well. Any movement or agitation gives it a little bit of shrinkage. All right. I want to do some more. So the bottom's flat and then his head lifts up. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. I think I'm going to do this one more time. I have a super thick piece that I'm working with. So I'm going to divvy that up. Travel down and build up the head area a little bit. And then this is going to be the butt. All right, so at this point, I have quite a bit of fiber left. And um, I'm, mm, I'm probably going to pull it off so I can start working with it off of the popsicle stick and sculpting the shape so i'm gonna start tacking down the um back and the more you felt in a certain area the more you can kind of position things the way you want them to be so his neck goes up so i'm tacking it down where it would slope down where it slopes down right here and then lifting up this part and felting underneath it to kind of get this. And then they have bl blunt butts. <laughs> so I'm going straight down into the Bumbry cheek. And I'm going to do a lot less felting than you because for the sake of this unedited masterpiece. So this fringe will add later, but I want to see how we're doing in terms of size. Good. I'm going to take some of that leftover piece, pull off a little chunk, and then I'm going to sort of wrap around where the head is and tight. There's a number of ways you could go about doing this. So he's looking top heavy. I'm going to take the other half of that piece that I have and then build up the back some more. Wrap it around. I'm focusing a lot of my attention on where the neck meets the head. Do they have necks? Apolegma. I love saying that. Apolegma. Apolegma neck. And now I'm under the apple neck. Right. And a good way to get the bottom flat is by pressing it against your surface and then felting, almost felting down into it. So it kind of sticks a little bit, but you don't want it to stick too much. But as you'll see when you do this, and you turn it over, the bottom starts to become flatter. It doesn't have to be super flat because the fringe is gonna help it stand. 
I've included quite a bit of extra fiber for you guys in here, so we could go a little bigger. But I think I'm going to, so you can see that this piece is that, and then it added quite a bit to his chin from this piece and I felted that down in, so I don't want to do too much. All right. Possibly something that I should have taken notes while I was doing, <laughs> so I can remember how I did it. <laughs> oh, ho, 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 Chelsea. You moron. All right, so now I have a blurb blurb body there and I think I am gonna set those aside for now you could felt more but I think I want to put the fringe on just um to ensure that I have enough fiber left over to do it and you don't want to overdo this part so it's best to just use less I think that's something that a lot of needle filters in the beginning struggle with doing is um, just too much fiber all the time. And um, I'm a culprit of it. Just think small, think thin, uh, think less. Because you can always add. It's so much harder to take away. You have to cut pieces off or felt forever to get it to shrink down to what you want it to be. And then sometimes there's no saving it. It's the same in a lot of other artistic disciplines, I feel like, uh, with painting. And it's it's so much easier to add more than to take away. So, there's no eraser, right? For felting. But, it's very forgiving. It's a super forgiving medium. Um, I think drawing is a lot less forgiving. Other knitting or crochets lot less forgiving anyway we are going to start on the wibble wobble things the phalanges i'm gonna call them um so i what basically what we do is we make a ribbon or strip um and uh not required but i'm going to use it in this video i would get a punch tool for this project this is a clover punch tool. Um, you put five needles in it and then uh, you, as you felt like this makes a flat piece. And we're basically needle felting a flat felt that we can then add to our three dimensional piece. So I'm gonna take, let's take, a, let's work in the same size pieces. We're splitting. And let's split it into thirds so we can keep it thin. And then we may not even need to pull more off. But I have three sort of equal pieces. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one and we'll lay it on the felting surface. And since your felting surface that I sent you is a little smaller, you might work in smaller pieces and then move it over. Um, but I'm sort of spreading this out so it's about an inch, inch and a half wide. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my single needle. I have a double. This is from Sarah too. You can put five in it. Or you could use a clover felting pen. They're pink, which I like. But I'm going to felt a line. Can you guys see that? Ooh! I'm a slow... I'm gonna felt the line basically as far as you can depending on the width of your felting surface I'm gonna fold the top down and sometimes I've seen people put a little noodle of fiber in here to get a more clean edge that's something you can do um, but I don't I'm lazy I don't want to do that so where you fold it over is going to be the bottom edge of your phalange. Okay. 
They call me Angie for land. <laughs> no, they don't. They should. I'm leaving these fringy edges because we're going to gather it like a pleat. So while this seems long, you're going to need more. Where's my slug? All right. So here's where the punch tool will come in handy. Although it's very doable without. I'm going to peel it off. Punch. Again. And you want this to be a firm felt. So you will have to felt this edge. Um, so I'll take a single needle very carefully. And felt in between my fingers. Oh, y'all getting stabbed today. Ow. Oh, yes. Ow. <laughs> so, I am going to show you guys another tool. You could also go in like that. Like a normal person. I'm a big air filter, so... Grab and stab. Sarah makes these. Seraphina Fiber Art. I'll um, put the link to her in the description box. Um, but this thing, you can, I've been sanding it down when it gets too cr chunky. But you take the piece, so this is great for ears or um, something like this. And then you can stab down in. So I'll link you to all of these tools in the description box. Maybe not right away. <laughs> I'm just going to post the video and then hopefully by next week I can add chapters and I'm just... Uh under a ridiculous amount of time pressure at this moment. And I don't really have anyone to help me, so. Um, it's hard. All right, so you could do that. You could, since you probably don't have this tool, you can just felt uh, at an angle in. And then lift, turn it upside down, angle in. And then you can get the punch tool at, I think they sell them at Joann's in the pen tool. So not the one that I have. It's a nice one. But there's a pink one that takes three pens. So you can go and grab these. They make this a lot easier. We're really only making this edge felt. This one we want to leave as fringy as possible. It's okay if it gets thin. Because that way we can attach it to the body more seamlessly. Just getting where it's. Oh, I had Wendy's today and my heart is like, oh, palpitating. So fun, so healthy. 700 cups of coffee and Wendy. Okay. This could go on forever. So I'm going to stop. But you can see here it's pretty, pretty well felted. And then when you want to add it to the body, you're going to take your purple lump. I'm going to... Start from the head, I think. But you can start from anywhere. I just kind of want to build this up a little more. So I'm felting that fringy edge down in here. And then I'm immediately 
Oop, I did it upside down. <laughs> Make sure you're doing it the right way. That would be good. What's great about felting, though, is you can peel it off. All right, and then I'm going to start gathering. So pinching the fiber so you get this cute little wrinkle. I might do it further down because he has quite a bit of chin. But you can also felt parts of this in more. So I'm gathering, felting in front of my gather, tacking down the top of my gather, and then tacking down the back. So you get a little flange. And basically I'm gonna do this all the way around. I like a lot of gather, personally. And this is gonna be flush with your felting mat even if the underside is not. So I'm gathering it up. Once you get your first one in, it's much easier. All right, and then underneath too, you're gonna wanna tack it down a bit. And we're gonna continue all the way around like that. I'm probably not going to show all of this. We'll do one side together and then you can hit the other side. So when I get around to the back, I'm going to do my last pleat a little bit higher up. Mine actually doesn't go all the way to the back of mine. You'll have to use your judgment because everyone's slug is going to be a little bit different shaped, which is what's great about it. I'm going to compact that in a little more so it tapers. And I would felt this a lot. Not a lot, but at least so it's fairly firmly attached. And then a lot of times when I'm sculpting, I'll move. I'll move it around as I'm sculpting it to try and see, okay, hey, this is how this needs to go. So you can push it in that direction and then give it a little poke. And then this, and if this looks weird or heavy in the front, you can felt it down more. See, slug. His Bumbry is looking not as perky. As I would like, so I'm going to take a little bit. I want to add a little oomph to the back, so I might even roll it up, make a little pillow, and then set that onto the back so I can get a more defined <laughs> donk. And this will give you a seam. But that's okay, because since the felt is so loose, the more you felt, the more it'll disappear. You can also felt the top down into that. But usually when I add a pillow like this, I'll put a t small tuft of fiber over it, drape that over, and then blend everything together. I'm gonna get my quick draw, McGraw. Who's that? Who even is that? Whoosh. My boyfriend Al always makes a whip sound, <laughs> whip crack sound. Whenever he like takes stuff out of his pockets. <laughs> so I started doing it too. 
like whoosh, any any time. So funny. <laughs> like one day I was like doing all these whip crack sounds. Like why am I doing this? It's like people around you, you you meme them, and then the people around you meme you, and then everybody's memeing each other. Lessons in memory. All right, I am. This one's perky. Got a perky slug. Um, I will show you how to come around the back. Um, you know, I don't really think I would need to because it's just the same all the way around. Depending on which way his head's gonna be cocked, he, it can be straight up. But I like I like mine looking kind of at you when he's sitting on the, his side. So you can see the whole sculpture and you can see most of his face when you're staring at it in one direction. Um, and he has a little cocked ear. So uh, I can show you. So we're going to, I'm going to keep working this this way to remind myself, okay, his face is going to be right here and not right on the front. And then I wrinkled up this side more because oops you can't see that i wrinkled up this side more because he's turned so his body would wrinkle that way and then this side would be more smooth you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna felt the um long pieces off camera okay so i have another ribbon that i made and it's okay if it changes size um some spots are going to be thicker some spots are going to be thinner and that actually ends up making it look more natural so wherever you end it up uh you can take your fringy piece and you can lay it over the last gather and felt it to that and this will give the last one that you did, which was probably kind of flimsy, more structure and uh, seamlessly connect them. So I'm going underneath into the wrinkle, flipping over and just making sure it's nice and attached. And then I'm going to come around the behind. So I like for my gathers to pick up a little bit here but or yours can be flat to the flat to the ground whatever it's clever but I think he looks cute with a little bit of an uptick so I just set them higher up And then once you have that in there, oh, the AC is turning on. Air conditioning. I don't need you right now because I'm going to be distracting all of my viewers. All 10 of my viewers, if that. I got four views on my video last night, and I realized that all of those views were me. But hopefully someday, somebody, somewhere, is going to be like, wow. I want to make that slug. And that girl, Chelsea, oh, she is just so funny. All right, so if I want a little bit of an uptick, I have to felt this part down. Just a touch. So you don't see it coming out from underneath. And now you see he's got like a little skirt. And then this one on this side, I'm gonna keep a little looser so we can turn this guy this way. So it's pretty wrinkly in the back. And then, I mean, have fun with this part. It's an enjoyable 
part of this project, I think. <laughs> Maybe it's tedious, but I, it's fun to lay the wrinkles out and see them take shape because once you add this part, it like basically becomes a slug. So I don't have much to go off of here. So I'm just going to tack the rest of this in. I'm going to make another phalange on camera, off camera, not on camera. And um, then I'll be right back. I'm probably, I'm, I don't have to do as much. So I'm just going to take... Probably about this much, maybe a little more. All right, bye. All right. I have a nice one here. I'm going to finish the last of my apalegma flange. Apalegma. Um, I think I want to... Yeah, we'll just do it the same way. So fringy bit up over, just following the curve of that um, of the of the one before it. Ooh, tumble. And then underneath where they overlap and then on top again and then make another gather hope this isn't super blurry in parts. It's hard to see this purple. If it is, I'll refilm it at some point. <laughs> Hopefully you guys are picking up what I'm putting down. All right, and now he's, the one I made originally, he has a lot of rumple in the front. But it kind of just ended up that way because I had extra gather and I think I'm gonna have extra again so we ended up making three pieces of flat felt to attach that were each probably I would say between six and eight inches total length So now you can pause the video and go about your felting. You really want to get this looking nice. And again, we're going to turn his head that way. So I like to twist it and twist and poke. That way it will hold its shape. All right. And here's my body shape. You could do even more pieces if you want. But since he's going to be curving this way. There's a lot of wrinkle on one side and a little wrinkle on this side. I feel like I would want more wrinkle on this side, but... Oh, well. The wool sort of dictates where it wants to go and what it wants you to do with it. And you just have to listen to it sometimes. You can exaggerate these more by stabbing in between them. Or up in underneath them. 
in where the curves are. See how, how much of a difference that made? So in between and up, up, in between, and then underneath, and then up. In between, up, in between, up, and on, and on, and on. I could stab this for another thousand years. I'm not going to because we need to do the next layer. Let's do the next layer first. Um, so the next layer is the same but less. So you've got a little ball of blue here and we're going to do a similar thing here, but then we're just going to lay it on top and then this one's a lot thinner. So you can split the blue up. You really only need a little skinny piece and then felt down the center. And then roll one side up. I would say this is a little narrow. If you make something that's too narrow, just grab a little more fiber and add it to that narrow area. See how this now is narrow. I'm gonna pull some off the end. So we're making an additional stripe. You can felt the edge of this a little. Or not. But I'm gonna do it a little. You're gonna take that strip and this goes all the way up across the front of his face. So you can take the fiber and just drape it over where your little nosey is going to be for now. And then you're just going to follow down. And then gather on top. It's not even really gathering. It's just laying it on top of your previous gathers and then following that curvature and you can poke up in to get a little more bubble right and then here it doesn't have to be the exact same as your other gathers And it doesn't have to come fully off. Like parts of it get felted into the, the previous ones. Just all depends on how you want it to look. Come around the Bumbry. And this fringe you can just felt directly to the butt. And then off camera, I'm going to make another one for the other side. And I'll be back. Whoopsies. My phone died. Or almost, I don't know, battery low. All right. So I've got my final piece here. We're going to overlap around the buttocks. If you have a double needle, I like using a single needle for this. There it is. Just cause you have more control over the fiber. And 
You could make an extra gather if you wanted, but I'm gonna keep following along here. And then a little more up here. And then you're gonna move it on up to meet. the area in the front. And then I'm gonna round the head out a little bit. Ooh, there's some blue in there. Um, you're gonna wanna periodically lift, I should have mentioned this before, the craft felt from your surface so you don't ruin it. I like to do a different piece of felt for, well, I theoretically would like to do a different piece of felt for every color, but I, I don't. I just kind of pull it off when it gets too polluted with other colors. All right, it's looking good. So here's my guy. He looks cute. Now we need to do the tail. Um, you know, if you want to blend this into the body a little more, there's two ways to do that. The easiest way to do it would be to acquire reverse needles. So these just catch onto the fiber and do the opposite. They pull fiber from inside of your project out. So it's a really nice way to finesse lines together, blend in cheeks or things like that. And then once the fiber is pulled out, you can tack it back down in and you just keep doing that until you're satisfied with the blend. So that's the way that I would recommend, but most of you probably don't have a version. The thing about felting is you can get all these tools, you can get all this junk, but like, why? You don't need it. You just need a puff of wool and, and a single needle and a felting pad. And that's it which is one of the reasons why it's awesome and then you can make literally anything um, but uh, there are tools out there that do make it easier on your life so anytime I see a tool I anyway I take a little bit of purple and when I say a little bit I mean a little bit like see how you can see through it nothing and then lay it over where you want to blend and then just tack it down and see that looks a lot nicer than over here I'm not gonna do it for the whole thing uh, because for the sake of instruction but at this point you would pause the video and go all the way around and blend in any seams that you don't like or if you're happy with the seams it's fine If you lost a lot of purple like I did over here, you can get it back in or you can keep the blue. They're all different and unique, so. So nice. All right, so I'm gonna take this gold thin heather rod. I don't know what it is, but I'm gonna start making these little French fries. So I did a lot because the original number I did didn't look right. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Woof. Twelve. Twelve is a lot. Uh, you probably don't want to do twelve. <laughs> so unroll your yellow. And in your little medallion here, you got two toothpicks. You only need one, but in case you lost it, I lose things all the time. So you just need a little fiber for each one. So about an inch, maybe more. It's up to you. Some of them are gonna be small and some of them are gonna be big. And then we're gonna roll onto the toothpick and you can wrap. And uh, each spine or french fry, whatever they are, they're probably about half a toothpick and a little extra coming off the top. 
So I'm gonna pull that off. I'm gonna poke, and this is the same way I do the octopus legs. So if you have done an octopus with me, then it's the same. And I'm just felting, rolling. You can shape them a little like this. And then poking down a little from the top to get that fuzzy bit in. And keeping a little bit of an edge for you to attach it to the body. Now, you can make them all at once. You can make them one at a time. Oh, he looks like a little dog. Um, I am just going to show you how you would put this in. So, I started with the ones on the edge and that didn't work out for me. So, I'm going to start directly in the middle of the butt on the highest point of the butt and then just tack that down in all around and then the more we add the firmer they're gonna be felted in there so one I will probably do six for right now and then, you know, depending on your mood or the time that it is, you may want to do six <laughs> or eight or 10, maybe not 12. They have a lot of them, but some of them don't. So it's whatever you choose. All right, I'll be back with um, five more. So I'm coming back early. I've done three and a half. I just wanted to add a few more suggestions on rolling onto the toothpick if you're having trouble. Um, if you if your french fries are coming out too thin, um, you can just add more wool, right? And then again, always wrap away from you and down. And if you spin the toothpick in your hand, it will start to felt the edges in. You can also felt a little bit on your toothpick before removing it off. That way it will hold its shape. Uh, I suggest watching this tutorial before you start, if you can. Um, I never do. And then there are things that people forget to say. <laughs> and they say them after. And then you're like, well, that would have been really helpful. So watching the tutorial beforehand is good practice. I've been getting a little, I'll get like halfway through and then I'll be like, okay, I want to start. I don't want to wait anymore. <laughs> okay, I'm done with this. Yes, no more players. So, I have some thin, some thick. I like variety with these. They don't all have to be uniform. And another way to get it on, get the wool on the toothpick is to roll the toothpick and guide the wool with your fingers as you spin it. Um, and I find that this is easier. And then you just keep rotating it. And then tack, 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 tack. Peel it off. And then resume. Felting. Yeah. Felt the nudie break. Yeah. Nudie break. Nudie break. Apalegma nudibrank. <laughs> what is apalegma? Let's see. I want to know. but not important at this very juncture. Okay, so I have five and then one that I already attached. Ooh, the sun is illuminating my glorious 
feltings here. So same deal for all of these. These are not as super well felted as I would usually. That's not a felting needle. That's a chew bit. I'm going to put this one right next to this one. How you arrange them is up to you. You can look at a picture and see how they go. But I am just going to see what looks good, what looks relatively even. Little bananas. If they're really tall, you can felt them down lower or higher up on the thing of the french fry. I know that's not what it is. If it feels like wobbly, you can you can felt it down and then use a less wobbly one to build it out. You want the edge here to be clean, right? So with that in mind, place the fringy bits for the outer ones towards the inside and then fold them up. So I got a lot on this side. I'm gonna put one more here. So you kind of felt it on. Oh, that sun is going to be. Is that sun annoying me if I move my body? My body. Um, felt it upside down first. And then felt it right side up. There you go. I would put more. It's just me, but it's up to you. I just feel like that looks better than that. All right. We've got, oh, let me close that curtain. Oh. Stretch. All right, so now parts of this are not as felt as I would like. If you want it really smooth, you would felt more. And you have, I have quite a bit of fiber left. Um, so if you want, if you felt it down, it starts to shrink in size. You can just um, add more fiber to build it up until you're happy with the height etc etc if you want to do some spots in your blue areas you would take teeny tiny bit of fiber and so look how look how small I'm pulling from and then I would pull just the end off of that and then I would even rip that in half roll the bit in your fingers so you have a little seed then you can place it on your project like this and felt it down in just straight down you can also take a little teeny bit, put it on the end of your needle first, and then, so I've seen a number of things. You could even just felt a little depression 
and then a tiny bit of wool and then apply that to the impression so it sinks down in and makes a smaller dot. When I apply the dots, I usually do, well, I didn't even number here, but I do an odd number and I scatter them as randomly as possible. It just looks better. So you wanna think uneven. All right, now let's turn our attention to the head. So my head right now is very under felted. Whenever you do facial features, you really want to be, have that part of the piece well felted. Cause anything, any shape you put on top will sink down into your project and then you'll just have to do it again um, until it's firmly felted and you can actually apply things. So again, if you need a guide to squeeze your little, but you want it firm and springy. And I gave him a little kitty face so and I like it kawaii so I I usually give them a little bit of a forehead and to do that I'll take a small piece of wool just a small chunk very minuscule and then you kind of roll it up into a loose loose pillow and I'm fuzzing up the edges so it's easy to put on and then I'm gonna add that, mm, let's do it long ways. So long this way and not horizontal. And then I'm gonna add that with the cranium, the chromium domium, more shape. And you wanna felt that well. Again, if you need to pause and felt, it's a good idea because I'm not felting nearly enough. He has a little kitty snoot. So I want to add, if you imagine a little kitty snoot, it comes out like a, a point. So I'm going to do that with some more purple. I'm gonna roll it up into a little pillow like that and then maybe even fold it in half so there's like a fringy edge here and then a blunt edge here and then I'm gonna put that on the tip of the nose remembering that I just did a little forehead here now I can start identifying where I want the eyes to go. So when I want to put in, put some eye depressions in, I just kind of push them in and be like, oh, that'll be cute if they go there. And then I felt a little bit in each area. So I can say, oh, hey, there's like a, a little socket. And then I want to remember that he has a forehead piece that we just added and the nose is pointed. So I focus my felting in between where the nose is going to be and where the head is. So you get a little bump and then that comes to a point. All right. Um, you can reverse needle or blend. Uh, if you would like in the same way that you would blend before. So I'm reverse needling with a, it's a 40 gauge reverse, but you can also take a little, little tiny piece of fiber and apply that wherever you want to blend. And for the sake of time, I'm using the 40 reverse. I did add two little blue balls for the um, muzzle 
because sea slugs have muzzles. Um, I'm going to take one tuft, roll it up in my hand, even roll it like a ball of clay, and then another tuft of a similar size, roll it in my hand. So it's just like the spots, but um, a little bigger. These are clearly two different sizes, so I'm going to go in and and then very carefully, because this is where you'll impale your finger, you wanna tack it down so it's a little more manageable and together and circular shaped before you put them on. <laughs> He's gonna look real weird for a minute. So, Imagine, see this little triangle that we did here? So the triangle is where the kitty mouth s starts, splits. So you're gonna attach your muzzle to that area. I like to do both at the same time so I can see what they look like together and then that dictates the direction that I stab and how I sculpt it. And you want to start thinking about the mouth. So underneath the little ball on the right and underneath the little ball on the left, you're going to make a deeper depression, deeper indentation there. And then you'll, and then right in the middle. Oh, so cute. I think you can already see it, right? He doesn't have a nose. You can do a nose, a little yellow nose would be cute. But I wanna add more to the top to sort of blend all this together and give the illusion of a nose. So I'm just gonna roll up a little purple ball and tack that down. And then you wanna sculpt the shape of the facial features. This is the hardest part. I could spend hours on a face. Hours, hours, hours. So a great thing to do is, you know, look at the picture in your kit. And then try to imagine how you need to stab it, where you need to stab it. This one has like cheeks, so cute. If you wanna give yours cheeks, you can felt little depressions to sort of highlight the rounded cheek look. And then I'm really, again, focusing a lot of my felting in between the forehead and the nose. And a good way to get it to, to see it is if you pinch it once it's on there and sort of try and pull it out and up like me and then you can see oh hey yeah this is how this is supposed to be to blend you can felt like this at an angle between these two areas also more stabbing gets better blended fibers but I do recommend, you know, if you want to get the most out of this project, uh, Punch Tool is a great resource. And then um, some reverse needles, you can get them on Amazon. They don't carry them in most craft stores. Maybe Hobby Lobby. Maybe. All right. I'm happy with how that's looking. And I'm going to set in my eyes just so I can get, get a good look at you. So let's take our two eyes. I tried to match them up as best I could. You can take your toothpick and then in those little depressions that we made earlier, you can dig that toothpick in there and then set the eye in. Mmm looks weird so I'm gonna move it 
forward, closer to the nose, and lower. Oops. Oh, better. Oh, he's so cute. Oh, stop it. So cute. He's here. He's like a little chipmunk. <laughs> I love these. I outdid myself. Oh, he's so cute. <laughs> love that. So, yeah, eyes, I recommend lower and closer to the muzzle. I think it makes them look better. But you can place your eyes wherever you want to put them. The eyes really are the spirit of the felted piece. Um, it really just brings it all together. I'm not going to glue them in yet. I'm just trying to get an idea of what he's going to look like. And I need more chin. So let's do a, let's do a chin shape. And you're going to take a little piece about an inch long. Lay it down onto your surface. I'm gonna move these guys so I can hold this up. You're gonna draw a an upside down U with your felting needle by poking that shape in and then rolling the fiber forward. You could roll up a ball in your hand too, but I find that this gives you a flatter, more chin-like shape and then you have this fuzz that you can attach it with easier and you have a more seamless blend so I've gone ahead and I peeled it off and I'm poking that all in and then if you have a grab and stab you could do that you can also get um, finger guards I hate the finger guards I cannot stand them but if you're a younger felter or your uh, parent teaching or doing this with a kid or teaching your kid. Um, I usually recommend 10 and up. Uh, but, you know, I've there have been kids who are younger who, who do it and love it. And it's all, uh, it's all up to the parent. Um, the felting needle pokes do hurt. But uh, if you just slap some finger protectors on them and let them have it, then... It's great. I wish I could have started felting when I was eight. My day job, I teach at a sewing studio. And it's super fun. Um, but also really stressful. Because in the beginning, I was like, they do what here? <laughs> they use machines and scissors. And it's six and up on the machines. They do a good job. I wish I had that, you know? Anyway, I'm attaching this chin piece. So see my little swoop? And then where you can fringe it up. So I'm laying it down on. The chin really helps, right? So I'm laying that on. I'm going to tack it down into the muzzle first. Just following the original shape that we did and reiterating it and then letting the chin come a little forward because it is a chin you don't want to felt it flat right what was the point all right so letting the chin come a little forward and then just tacking down the fringe fringy bits there the floofs and then sculpting some more once your ch the chin is in I mean, I could sit here all day, but the sculpting, how you sculpt it, where you poke it is really up to you. Again, this is why you would want to have a couple easier things under your belt first. He's not hard. He just... has a little bit of everything in. And it helps to have a little bit of experience under your belt especially when you're doing a face with shapes and details and things like that all right precious it's looking precious so we need 
some cheeks. We're gonna do some ears and then we're gonna be done. So cheeks, uh, I really took the smallest bit. And then even after that, I'm splitting it in half. I'm gonna roll it in my fingers. And then I set the cheek a little further back at a diagonal from the eye. A little down and a little lower at a diagonal and then you want to just felt that in a circle the other side I'm looking down from the top so I can make sure that I am applying this in the right spot So cute. I would maybe even move this one a little up. You could add chubby cheeks. Mine kind of just ended up with chubby cheeks this time. He looks like a little gopher or something. <laughs> so now, oh, you got cheeks. We can do the mouth detail and then we'll do the last part, which is the ears. I did spots on all sides on the back end, but you can look at other uh, pictures of all kinds of nudibranchs to see. Nudibranch. I love um, nature documentaries and David Attenborough says it, nudibranch. And he also says copepod, funny to me. <laughs> copepod. So I would just go around talking about copepods. And then um, one day Al got me a giant microbe um, of a copepod. <laughs> and it's so cute. I love giant microbes. For those of you who don't know what giant microbes are, they're basically exactly what they sound, but they're like really cute stuffed animals of microbes. It has all the diseases. They have COVID. So cute. <laughs> anyway, I took a really tiny piece of black. I gave you an exorbitant amount of black for this. So use it for something good. But I took it, and here I'll do it again because I was blathering about Kobe pods. So I took a little piece, so small. And then I even have that, like you don't even need that. And then in my hands, I twist, twist and roll. And if you imagine a pen or pencil drawing, this is basically the your lead or your, your mark. And I rip that in half again too, because it gets too long. And then I keep rolling it. So in that indentation, you're going to set your little sliver. I always talk like I'm asking a question. What? What? <laughs> you're going to set that little sliver in to your indentation. I tack down the middle first and then move to the right and then move to the left. So cute. So cute and precious. Uh, it might sink down in too far, so you can put it in again. And then I'm felting across because I want this to be this line to go away. So he just has the mouth, but it's up to you what you want to do, how you want to do it. If you want to go all the way up, you can give them a little nose. So many things you could do. So many colors you could try. You literally just need less than a, a little more than a half ounce of fiber to make. To make this guy. All right, so we need some Pikachu ears. I'm going to do yellow first. And oops, I bonked it. Sorry. I'm going to do yellow gonna pull off a chunk like that probably two inches two and a half inches tall split it right down the middle lay them down on my felting 
surface. Then I'm gonna spread it out a little bit. And since I have longer pieces, I may fold them in half and then tack them down just because the ears are shorter. So I have two shapes like this. Then we'll draw the Pikachu shape. So it's like a little bunny ear that comes down. It's a little blunt on the top. And I'm folding everything in. It's like a diamond. I don't want to felt it too much. So you're going for something like that. I'm going to felt it flat, but I'm also going to felt it this way too. And then this way. And we're going to add purple to the bottoms. If you feel like they're not thick enough, you can add more yellow fiber to the top. Uh, I think mine are all right. I'm felting them narrower while still trying to maintain the original shape that I had. And then to do that, I a little bit here, felt a little bit there. And you want your ears to be the same. So I'll do one. Oops, not in frame. I'll do one and then the other. One ear and the other. I'm gonna felt you. I'm gonna felt you and poke you. One ear, maybe next week. I'm going to poke you. I'm going to poke and poke. I don't know anything about copyright, but I'm hoping that. <laughs> Since I'm singing it so poorly. That no one going to get me. So I'm just making these little diamonds that are longer on the bottom. But then they change shape as you felt them from all directions. So a little bit this way, a little bit that way. And then you don't want to do it too much one way or the other. So you, it's kind of a balancing act where you felt down one side and then down the other side. But then you felt it back flat again. And then you felt the edges again. All right, I've got two little ears. I want to pull some of this off and then I'm going to add purple in. So taking a little purple tuft, splitting it up. And I think what I did was I just wrapped it around the base and then felted it into place. And if you get, if it's patchy or weird, you just take a little piece and lay it on top. And then just keep doing the same thing that you were doing before. Maintaining the shape of all four sides and then the top and the bottom. Felting this pretty well. These come more straight across and are thicker, but less fiber. So it it really is up to you if you want to make them bigger or smaller or chonkier. Or... Mm. 
the key is though making them at the same time before you put them on something I always don't do I'm a real culprit of doing one whole side of the thing and then it's so hard to get the other side to look the same as the first side because you didn't do everything at the same time really like what's going on in this one so I'm just adding a little more purple to where there isn't so this part's really up to you how much yellow you want in your ear and on and on those are good I'm gonna pull off any extra fiber this got a little over felted so what I'm doing is I'm tearing gently tearing the fibers so they're they're flat this is where it's gonna attach and then I might do it with this one too so just sort of pulling it gently in all directions so it's like a little hat that you set on and we'll position the oh He's just a little rabbit. Just a little rabbit. Alright. So, you look what if I did. Oh, I can't deal. <gasps> I'm doing that. <laughs> so, you can put them on however you want and experiment. If you got really big ones like I did, you can flop them over like a little bunny. You can do, you know, a droop. Oh my god, stop. You can do straight back, um, or you can do more traditional um, unibrank antennae nays. They're just sort of straight up. If they're too tall, I wouldn't cut it. I would just pull more out, and they'll shorten down when you add them on. But I know exactly how I'm going to. So now we're going to attach it. You see a little yellow, that's fine. We'll, we're going to cover it with purple. So just get the first one on. And then get the second one on how you want. Just so cute. It's a little sea bunny. They have sea bunnies. They're white and black. They're a type of nudibranch. And they're so cute. They're like white and they and they have black ears. And they look just like little poofs of joy. And they have a they I think and they have these little black dots all over their butts. Look it up, sea bunny and then make one <laughs> so now we need to blend in these two areas and this is basically the last thing we're gonna do so i'm taking a little bit of purple fiber and then blending it up the ear and the front and then bringing it around and kind of using the point of my felting needle to guide again people say don't drag your needle i drag my needle all the time you don't want to drag it so hard that you break it but you can blend fibers just by gently flicking the needle like a little comb and pulling fibers up and pulling fibers down and then tacking them down in place I'm a little seam oh he's so seriously precious I love this project I hope you do too it really there really just needs to be more kawaii new to rank babies on this planet so I don't know if you guys can see this well but I'm just getting in the back taking tiny tiny tufts applying them where they the seam needs to be blended away and then the yellow needs to be covered up And 
And I would felt this whole thing. Like, these are out of control. I would add more shorter ones. Because some of these are really tall. I would put some there. I would put some there, too. Okay. I think my yellow cheek was too big. Oh gosh, this one needs a nose, I think. And using the needle to just comb some of the fibers up and then tack them down. And if you wanted to cur curl them forward, you could fold one and then felt that down into the back of the ear and then it'll kind of just stick like that. I want his curve to be more pronounced this way, so I would just hold it and then felt and then this side too this whole bit. So cutie. The back end definitely needs work. All right. So that's basically it. Oh, hopefully that didn't migrate too much. I haven't been paying attention. So I need help. I need a camera person. Let's put a nose on. A little yellow nose. Oops, it fell off. Oh, I don't like it. There we go. It's just, it's just not quite right. Oh, wait, now it is. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Someone's gonna love you, little guy. Someone's gonna see you and they're gonna love you. Little sea bunny. So you can see mine look totally different <laughs> from one to the next. So everyone's is gonna look different. And that's the beauty of it. All right, now that I've got him, I'm gonna glue the eyes in. So, super glue. Where are you? Super, super glue. Where are you? Super glue. Where did I put you? I thought I was prepared. And I'm not. What? 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 Oh, so hard to be me. Anyway, I'm clipping the eyes down. So they're a little shorter. And then I would take my super glue. Oh, there it is. And make a little depression where the eyes were. Again, because when you pull them out, it pulls fibers out with it. So you need to make a new hole. You can use a weaving needle or an awl. Those tools work better than the toothpick. But I just put a dab of glue on the end and I'm setting the eye in. And then same for this one. And then setting the eye in. And pushing it down. And then we are done. 
me see money other guy every all the guys oh it's an undersea party Woo! all right so thank you for sticking with me this long this is a long one if for some reason you didn't get all your parts, you can email me. If you have any questions, please email me, kkcrafts at gmail.com. If you want to purchase a kit from me after watching this tutorial, same place. Um, and then all the tools that I mentioned will be linked in the description box below. Maybe not right away. <laughs> so give me a couple weeks. I'll have a better description written. Um, and then... Maybe by the time you watch this, it'll be there. So just chillax, all right? But if it's not and you have questions, um, I'm always happy to chat. And please send me pictures of the things that you make. I love seeing them. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. Happy felting. Bye.